Welcome, everyone, uh, to the PSADT version 4 launch webinar. Dan, you want to get us started? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, I'm Dan Cunningham. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of PSADT and uh, the project lead at uh, Patchman PC. Uh, so I've been with this project since I think it was 2000, 2012. Uh, it's, it's been around a while. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's been it's been a fun ride. And we're finally at version four. We've only been talking about it for eight years. Uh, so uh, we're going to go through uh, just introductions of the the team. Um, we're going to go through just a, a little um, overview of PSA D three and where we're coming from with the upgrade to V four. And then we're going to delve into a lot of what's new. And uh, there is a lot, and we have uh, quite a bit of quite a lot of demos. Well, we do have quite a bit of slides. So. Um, uh, yeah, we'll just hold tight. There's a lot to get through. Um, all right, so uh, let's jump into the introductions. Uh, as I said, I'm uh, one of the co-founders of PSATD, um, and I'm the kind of project lead at Patch My PC, uh, strategic innovation leader. Uh, so uh, you can find me on Twitter, Blue Sky, or sorry, X Blue Sky. Uh, Mitch? No worries, thank you. So my name is Mitch. Um, I'm relatively new to the PSADT team. Um, I sort of got in contact with Dan around March, April, um, with a few uh, patches and fixes to uh, PSADT3 and um, eventually became a developer. So um, I've been working uh, closely with the team on the PSADT V4 release. Um, my profession by day is a solutions architect or uh, consultant. And you can find me on Twitter on the handle on the screen. However, I don't really use Twitter a whole lot. Hi, uh, Dan Goff. I've um, been using the PS App Deploy Toolkit for many years as a packager. Uh, I've joined Patch My PC in February, and now I get a chance to develop and contribute to the code. And I also work on other internal systems and do lots of PowerShell scripting as part of my job as well in my everyday today. Hi, uh, Sean Lillis. I'm also a co-founder of PSADT alongside Dan. Uh, so been involved in the project from inception some 11 years ago or so uh, to today. Uh, I'm an end user computing architect at Zurich Insurance. Um, yeah, really thrilled to be here today for the launch of V4. The team have done an amazing job and taking it to the next level. Uh, so can't wait for you to hear more. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Mel Mishwani. Uh, I joined the project. I think I was the third one uh, on the team. It had already been underway for a few years when I joined it. I was uh, in the endpoint engineering packaging space at the time, and it was a perfect fit as I was trying to replace Script at the time. So uh, many, many years later, still working on it. And uh, honestly, besides all the time I spent with the uh, my two little boys, it probably just goes to here. Um, and if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be reading books. So this is all my book reading time goes to PSADT now. So <laughs> there's that. Other than that, in my day-to-day, -day, I'm a technical account manager at Exonius. And uh, yeah, happy to uh, be here today. And uh, I hope you guys uh, like V4 as much as I do. Um, for those of you who don't already know, um, I'm guessing pretty much everybody here is here because they know what V3 is, but let's just kind of do a little recap. Uh, so what is V3 or what is PSADT? Uh, next slide. It is, um, essentially an open source PowerShell framework for creating application deployment scripts. Um, it consists of a standardized workflow for application installs or uh, uninstalls or repairs. Um, it uh, allows you to encapsulate a pre-existing vendor install and um, to add new steps to the installation process. Uh, so like performing tasks before or after an install. Um, it allows you to um, provide enhanced installation capabilities. So uh, user interaction, automated logging, things like that. Um, and standardize on your application deployments for any given uh, organization. Uh, it's uh, basically it consists of a, a. It also consists of a set of easy to use functions um, to simplify common deployment tasks. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, it also integrates with a lot of third party tools. So uh, first of uh, Scatman, which is part of the Apache PC family, uh, Master Packager, uh, which is a, a great user interface for it, uh, Flexer Admin Studio, Install Shield, Rope Pack, 
there's uh, quite a number of uh, different integrations that uh, have popped up over the, the years. So uh, it's very well known and used uh, in the community. When we started on the kind of V4 track, uh, we were, uh, V3 was basically built around uh, Windows 7 timeframe. Um, it was built for PowerShell 2, I think initially. Recently, we've kind of put a minimal requirement of PowerShell 3 on it, but it still uh, maintained support for a lot of legacy systems. So like it's still, I think up until recently, it still ran on Windows 2000, um, it, which is kind of going back quite a bit. Um, and considering we, we were supporting that, um, Microsoft extended security updates uh, for Windows 7 ended in January 2023. So we we were kind of supporting this going back for a long, long time. And we uh, we would often be able to like, contact, get contacted by uh, the likes of banks or people like that who still had like really, really old OSs and they were, um, they've still been able to deploy things out without any uh, major issues. Uh, so, but in, in keeping it to support old versions, We've not been able to take advantage of new capabilities in the operating systems, in hardware, uh, in PowerShell itself. Uh, for example, we still use get WMI object um, versus get sim instance, which uh, kind of sucks. So um, it was time we kind of moved things forward. So what were our goals for before? Um, mainly ditch the legacy code that had been holding us back. Uh, and it's been heavily uh, rewritten, um, modernize the end user experience uh, to fit in with kind of like Windows 10, Windows 11 look and feel, um, add in a lot of longstanding user requested features. And we also wanted to be able to provide Patch My PC the ability to provide commercial support for PSHD as well. So what's new? What's, what are we doing different? Well, so the, the look and feel has changed. We've got a new uh, modern fluent user interface uh, for if you're working with v4 scripts and that's we have like a, a standard and also there's a dark mode as well yeah so we we work in um both light and dark mode actually um mitch i'm gonna hand over to you for the rest of this not a problem at all thank you very much so just a little bit more of a i suppose a deeper dive into what uh psadt v4 is first and foremost it's now a digitally signed powershell module uh why that's important is um in today's current landscape, it's important that we have our code digitally signed, not so much just to verify the identity and ensure that it's genuine and coming from us, but it's required by a lot of endpoint security vendors now as well, particularly with organizations doing things like AppLocker and Windows Defender Application Control or WDAC. Uh, the signing of our module will ensure that the those projects, our project can load easily into those environments without having to do exceptions and things like that. Our code base has been completely refactored and optimized. So as Dan hinted at before, uh, a lot of um, constraints were placed upon us by having to support PowerShell 2 and PowerShell 3 targets. By moving that target forward to Windows PowerShell 5.1, it opens the door for a lot of optimizations that you can do within uh, PowerShell to make things faster, make things better, make things more strongly defined, and that's better for our project overall. There's a lot of defensive coding as well uh, in the project to ensure the security and reliability, um, and I'll touch on that a little bit later on. It now supports PowerShell 7 and ARM, um, and that's ARM32 um, and ARM64. Um, um, they are tested targets, and they are tested on my Mac OS with a Parallels VM, and the project works flawlessly. We also have the complete removal of VB script from the project. Uh, this is very important as well. Microsoft have announced the deprecation of VB script, and while the deprecation announcement doesn't mean it's going anywhere fast. It has been a little bit of a problem for our toolkit just because a lot of antivirus vendors and endpoint security vendors aren't permitting VB script anymore. By just taking away VB script entirely and working on a different solution that it was fulfilling, uh, the issue is eliminated. And lastly, all the C-sharp code which comes with the module is compiled and digitally signed. Why that's important is beforehand, we were dynamically compiling the C-sharp code as part of our project and it would load in from a temporary location. This is not really compatible with things like Windows Defender Application Control. So by shipping our own signed compiled DLLs, that issue is now eliminated. And lastly, um, a largely requested feature is WIM support. Uh, we have, uh, not only do we have WIM support, we also have zero config WIM support. So uh, that'll be demonstrated a little bit later on in this presentation. But what um, zero config WIM file support is going to give you is you can have your WIM file directly in the files uh, folder of your deployment. It will automatically mount 
And if it has an MSI within the WIM file, it will then zero config detect that MSI and just run. The dismounting and cleanup of that WIM file is completely automated. You don't have to think about it. But of course, if you want full control, you're able to manually mount and dismount WIM files also. Uh, moving on to what else is new, because yes, there's a lot more. Um, support for overriding configurations via the registry. So uh, we're all probably familiar here with ADMX templates and configuring things via policy. Imagine you've got 200 deployments or 200 applications packaged with PSADT via Intune, and all of a sudden you need to make a config change that is um, important to the business. Do you really want to repackage 200 applications to amend the config? Or if you can ingest an ADMX template into Intune and change that config and have it enforced, uh, that's going to be a lot easier for people. Uh, the ADMX template will come following the release um, and we hope to get that out soon. The next thing on a bit more of a technical detail is we now support uh, a lot of PowerShell standard um, standards a lot better. So previously uh, we had conventions like uh, continue on error, which you could specify as true or false. Um, that was a very PSADT-ism and what we've really wanted to do with the project is make it so that you can take PowerShell knowledge that you've learned from anywhere and apply it to our project. So by being able to use things like error action silently continue or error action stop versus something uh, called continue on error, which was specific to our project, you will have a much nicer experience and a much more natural experience using PowerShell. Uh, a lot of types as well uh, support standard filtering, uh, similar to what you would do with where object. So rather than some complex custom specific filtration system on something like, um, you know, get installed application or something like that, you can now provide a filter script just like you would with where object. And it's a much more native and natural way to filter your data. We also strongly type and define our data types as well. So all of the data types that are returned from PSADT functions now return a custom, like a class or structure rather than something like a PS custom object. It gives you a more guarantee on what data you're getting back out and a more guaranteed contract as to what properties are going to be within that object. We still support extensions as well. Um, and what's really exciting about this being a PowerShell module is now that extensions can also be PowerShell modules. So what we anticipate is, we anticipate that this is almost going to be like the dawn of a new era when it comes to extending PS App Deploy Toolkit. Rather than having extensions which get shared on the discourse site or get shared through discussions on the project, people can now create and share their extensions on the PS Gallery, uh, having it depend on PS App Deploy Toolkit. It's um, going to be easier than ever to get those extensions and uh, to be able to ingest them and use them as part of your projects. We also have some really cool stuff for extensions as well, um, such as custom action support for extensions. What this means simply is you might have an extension which um, allows you to send an email at the end of a deployment or something like that. Rather than creating the extension and then having your end user have to put in hooks into their deployment scripts, you can say on, on project close or on session close to actually do that email function so that people can start using and consuming those extensions without really having to edit their deployment and add lots of hooks into it. By you as the extension author adding those hooks automatically, you make it a lot nicer for your users and stuff. And lastly, despite all of these changes and everything we've done to bring things forward, we have full backwards compatibility with these three deployment scripts. So right now, while you can uh, deploy PS App Deploy Toolkit, using the new templates and new methodologies, which we're going to get into, you can take your existing script and it just runs. Um, some of the things around our module and our resiliency and why the module has been important to us and what we've been able to do with it is an object oriented design to encapsulate our deployments. So previously, um, as we know, um, PS App Deploy Toolkit would uh, dot source in App Deploy Toolkit main, and that was basically Everything was kind of just there uh, uh, on the stack in PowerShell, and that's how things operated. What we've done now is the variables that constitute a deployment. So they are things like app name, install title, all of these things, dir files. These are all now part of an object, which uh, means you can have multiple objects as well. So by allowing this, you can potentially have custom scenarios where you might have one deployment script that can have seven independent sessions, which do execute in parallel, but they all have their own logging. So rather than having seven applications you have to chain in Intune, you can then scriptify your one workflow, have it log to seven different outputs, 
if it had seven different dependencies and everything else to really support what you might want to do as a, uh, a package on. Uh, we also internally in the module have an immutable command lookup table. Uh, why this is important to us is um, PowerShell, it's very easy to spoof uh, functions uh, within um, the console. So you can redefine things like bright host, you can redefine other functions. By having an immutable lookup table, that means that our functions will um, always be guaranteed to be called the original Microsoft one or our own functions. We also code in PowerShell's strict mode and we use V3 at the strict mode compliance level. Uh, V3 is the highest level that Microsoft provide for strict mode. And what's important with that is it really takes out a lot of the um, a lot of the undefined behavior of PowerShell. So it guarantees to us that we've got a more guaranteed, more robust, more reliable outcome because we uh, have better null checking and other types of checks. We also have a lot of performance optimizations because we're using more modern and efficient object types. These are very important uh, to us to make the project faster. And it's one of the things that getting rid of the baggage from PowerShell 2 has allowed for us. And lastly, we build via a CICD uh, pipeline system for code validation. It does linting, it does our unit testing, it does document generation, and it does a lot more. By having a build pipeline rather than a manual release cycle, it really automates the, the process entirely. It ensures a guaranteed outcome and ensures consistency between releases uh, because a lot of people do depend on downloading the latest release and having it be in an expected format. This really assists with that. Um, and it's already been production tested. So at my previous employer, I had uh, an early version of V4 deployed to around 200 workstations and had it doing production workloads for that client. Um, I believe some of the other gentlemen on this call have also done some testing within their own workplace as well. So not only are you getting a brand new refreshed PS App Deploy Toolkit, you're getting something that's already been put through its paces. So what's changed? Um, there couldn't be a release like this without some level of change. And some of those changes are the renaming of a few different bits and pieces. Some of them are to do with just doing things better. And some of them are to do with making sure we're using the right verbs and languages for PowerShell. So previously we had deployed dash application. This is now called invoke app deploy toolkit. Um, invoke is a standard PowerShell verb and we wanna make sure we're using the correct verbs for everything we do in PowerShell moving forward. The configuration, we previously had an XML file which uh, had everything in it. It had the config, it had the strings. It was this really long file. And um, XML is, it was the right thing to use at the time, but it's probably not the right thing to use today. We now use PowerShell's um, data file format, which is PSD1. This provides um, a native mechanism in PowerShell to have our config with comments and everything that we need. And it also works very well for our strings um, so that the right language can be picked. It takes away a lot of code that we need to maintain and just provides a better outcome. Lastly, um, some of our functions were fairly ambiguously named because uh, at the time, there wasn't a lot of stuff out there that it could have conflicted with. However, things like copy file and write log, they're very generic. We now prefix all of our functions with the keyword ADT. So when you're using something like copy ADT file or copy ADT, uh, sorry, write ADT log entry, you know that you're using an ADT function. During this time as well, we have also corrected some of the verbiage as well. So uh, at the past, um, regrettably, we had something like execute process uh, to do things. And it doesn't highlight well in editors now that do syntax highlighting. It's been very important to uh, correct that. And by using something like start ADT process, it's a much more natural naming convention. It follows start process, which comes with PowerShell and uh, makes it a lot easier for people to jump in and start using our commandlets. Um, other changes, um, we also had a lot of uh, parameters on functions which were booleans instead of switches. Um, this was done for one reason or another, but it's not um, it's not a very good way to interface with PowerShell and switches are a much nicer way to do things. So we now have switches in place of booleans and some examples of those would be um, if we, you might've had something like topmost and you might've had topmost true or false. Uh, this is now a single switch called not topmost and by way of using a switch, you know that if the switch isn't specified, the default behavior is that it is going to be topmost. So it makes it a lot clearer as to what's going on under the hood without having to review the source code. 
Uh, we also had some really strange filter filtering systems for um, some of our functions as well. Uh, and these were done back in the day, but a lot more, a lot of people these days would like something more familiar, such as what you would do with rare object where you actually have a filter script. So we've removed MSI applications. Um, this has been a refactored function and rather than doing something really complex like that filter application with the multi-dimensional array, you can now specify a very natural filter script where the publisher equals Oracle uh, and the display name uh, not matching Java 8 update 45. It's a much more natural way to work and you're going to be able to leverage that to achieve your outcomes quicker and more easily. Uh, we also talked about the many commands using the continue on error. So just to highlight that again, uh, continue on error has now disappeared entirely. You can now leverage a uh, standard PowerShell convention such as error action. And what was confusing before is a lot of functions had error action as well as continue on error. So which one do you use? So now that's completely gone. And instead of doing something like continue on error, true or false, you can now do error action stop to have the error terminate the script and you can ultimately catch that and do something with it. Or you can have silently continue where the error that comes up uh, will still log to the log. However, it won't terminate the script and uh, your deployment will continue onwards. Um, with that in mind, I'd like to now hand over to Dan Goff. Uh, Dan Goff is going to be running through how you get started with our new project. And um, after that, he, I believe you'll be running some demos as well. Over to you, Dan. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mitch. Good job. Uh, right. So as you can see, um, you can download the latest release from GitHub, which may not be there if you look right now, but it will be there very soon. Dan is currently working on uh, just finalizing the last bits of the release. Um, but you can actually go to the GitHub page and go to uh, switch branches to the develop branch and you can get an early sneak uh, look at what's there. And you can download that and you can import from the source. Um, as well as just downloading the zips from the GitHub repo like you're perhaps used to with V3, you will be able to install it from the PowerShell gallery with uh, an install module command. Uh, again, that's not up there right away, but it will be up there very soon. Uh, I, if not today, it will be up there tomorrow for you guys. Once you've imported your module, if you want to create a template ready for you to start putting your installers into and editing your deployment scripts, there's a command new ADT template, which will scaffold out the whole folder structure for you. You can give it a name, which will be the name of the folder. You can give it the destination. And if you add the show switch as shown on there, it will pop the folder up for you in Explorer ready to use. Um, so you can see on screen, we've got invoke at deploy toolkit XE now, which replaces deploy application. Next to that is the PS1 script, which is the script that you will edit for your uh, deployment. Files and support files folders, which uh, you will be used to from previous versions. The other folders are all new. And what these are is they are folders copied out from it, the inside of the PS app deploy toolkit folder, which is where the module lives. And the reason is it, then you can have, you can edit all these config uh, files and these assets, the images, without having to actually touch the contents of the module. So when a new version of the module comes along, you can replace that PS app deploy toolkit folder. And, but these folders that are outside it will actually override the contents of the module itself. So you, you don't need to do what you might have had to do before, which was download a new version of the module uh, or the project, and then do a diff and try and copy over bits piece by piece and work out what's changed and what's not. You can also display the built-in help. There was a script to do this before. And now it's a command, show ADT help console. Uh, from there, you, you can browse every single function in the project and get the built-in help for it. So there's a lot of big changes here, and they might be scary. Some of you might be worried that you're going to have to relearn everything, but we've got you. You can calm down. Because, as Mitch already alluded to earlier, we've got complete backwards compatibility with the V3 deployment scripts. So we have a compatibility layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. So before, uh, with V3, your deploy application PS1 script would dot source app deploy toolkit main, which contains all of the functions. When you're using the toolkit in compatibility mode, this toolkit main script exists again, but it just contains a bunch of wrappers that remap the old command names through to the new command names. And as they do that, they also remap any of the change parameters. 
including all of this stuff that mentioned uh, Mitch mentioned a little while ago. So all the continue on error true or false, it'll it knows if the function defaults to error action stop or continue, and it'll put the right thing in. If you use those uh, nested arrays to build up your filters, it will convert those to filter scripts. So if you want to generate a slightly different folder structure from the, the module to use this compatibility mode, there is an extra switch for new ADT template. Uh, just add version 3, and it will give you a slightly different layout. From the screenshot below, you can see we've now got deploy application.exe, which is actually the same executable as before. It's just named differently just to make it more familiar. We have um, app deploy toolkit, which was the previous folder that the, mod, that the toolkit lived in. And inside there is the wrapper functions. So your deploy application PS1 goes in the root of this folder. When it runs, the first thing it does is it calls the script in that app deploy toolkit folder, which then imports the module sets up all of the wrappers to add all the backwards compatibility stuff for you. So not only that, we've got some commands that can assist you with migration. So you can run test ADT compatibility and give it the path to your old deploy application PS1 script. And it'll give you a detailed report of showing you line by line which commands have changed, what you need to change them to, which parameters have changed, and what you need to change those to. And variables as well, because some, some of the variables need to be accessed slightly differently. Uh, convert ADT deployment does something very similar. It will actually not just uh, report on those changes, but it will fix the script for you. And it will output that to a new folder. You can give it a path of either a, a script by itself, or you can give it a folder. And if you give it the folder, it will regenerate the whole folder with a underscore converted at the end of the name. It will set everything up with a new module, your old scripts, translated to v4 standards and it will copy over the contents of the files and support files folder as well so you can use the first command just to generate yourself a report um just to see what what what's changed then run the second command to do the job and then run it and see how it goes those two commands that i just mentioned are actually now in a separate companion module ps app deploy toolkit.tools which when this was written, we'd anticipated that we'd have this done earlier this afternoon, but um, it will be there at that uh, URL shown there, and it will also be on the gallery as well. If um, this module is going to be a pre-release on the gallery, you, when installing via the install module command, you need to add that extra switch on screen, allow pre-release, otherwise it won't be able to see it. It won't install. So demo time. So I'd love to be able to show you how to install the module from the PS Gallery, but that will have to come for a future webinar. But today we have um, in my folder here, we've got the main module and the tools module. And if anybody wanted to go and download the develop branch and play with it, this is exactly how you'd import it. Import module, just give it the name of the path. It needs either the folder or the PSD one that lives inside it. Import module and let's do the tools one too. Did I forget to copy that over? Aha, I reverted my machine. Right, so when this gets installed from the gallery, it will sort this bit for you. It's a um, dependency on another module. So PS Script Analyzer, you may be aware of it in, if you've installed VS Code because it comes with that. It does syntax highlighting. It tells you about errors in your script, and that's the engine that we're using to um, detect and correct an update from v3 to v4 syntax. Some custom rules. It also depends on PS app deployed toolkit, in, in which is not installed in a module directory. So I need to do another little thing.
Okay. Let's just go into the main toolkit module. And I'll see if I can get that fixed while uh, we have another demo after me. Should we go to the other demo and then come back to the stand? No, that's fine. I've got plenty to show until that point. So let's just go into okay, this. Perfect. So we've got the module installed. Um, I can now see what all my commands are. So the module is imported. We've got all of our commands. I can show the help console. And browse around with that. So, um, so that's the module, but we need um, a folder to get started with to create ourselves a new package. So for that one, we want new ADT templates. If you just run it by itself, it will do it in the current folder with a default name. And there's our project to start with. If we wanted to make one that was compatible with V3 scripts, we need to give it a slightly different name. And now this has got the deploy application in there as well. So I'm just going to bring up this folder. So this is a pre-baked package ready to go. Let's have a look at what's inside. So this new format of the script, invoke app deploy toolkit PS1. Um, similar to how the V3 script was, where we had a bunch of variables that needed to be defined, these are now inside this ADT session block. So these are all blank by default. You need to fill those values in. And then we have a bunch of sections, slightly different layout before. Now they're in functions, but you have install ADT deployment, which is where you put all your commands to do your installation. You'll notice that the uh, commands are now different with this ADT prefix in front of the noun part of the command name. Um, certain variables, like uh, the application, the deployment specific, like the application name or the version are now part of this ADT session object. And so they need to be accessed slightly differently. Again, the conversion scripts and everything does that for you, but it's just something to be aware of when you're starting a script from scratch. By the way, one thing about this ADT session architecture like this is that in future, it will allow you to have multiple sessions running at once. So you can define two different application deployments in the start of your script, and you can run them separately. They'll both have separate logs because part of the session is the log path, and you can manage them all from one script. We just double click this, it's going to run for us. There's a new user interface. Unfortunately, not with all the nice transparency effects because I'm running in a Hyper-V machine. There we go, and complete. We have VLC installed and now we're removing it. One other thing that um, Mitch mentioned was the WIM support. So we have a WIM demo here. This is literally just an empty uh, folder created for a new ADT template. And all I've done, I haven't edited any of the PowerShell scripts. I've dropped in a WIM file. 
And you can create these with uh, 7 zip or Nana zip, which is a fork of 7 zip just with a nice UI. And it's basically a zip file. Uh, the reason a lot of people have uh, grown accustomed to using these WIM files with the toolkit is because um, Configuration Manager takes a very long time to transfer lots of separate small files across the network. If you've got a large package like MATLAB or one of the big CAD packages, it can take forever to transfer, but it's a lot quicker if it's one single file. And using a zip file is, isn't the greatest because then once you've got that zip file delivered to the endpoint, you've then got to extract it, which is waste a load of disk space and CPU doing all that. The WIM file gets mounted and you can just use the contents directly. There are commands to do the mounting, such as mount ADT WIM file, image path, let's give it that one. Path C Wim. Let's give it an index value. Let's have a look. And there is our file. And dismount. Don't need all that extra stuff on there. And it's gone. So that's how you do it in your script if you wanted to control the whole process manually. If you had different um, setup XCs and all sorts of other things that you want to run on those contents. But if it's literally just an MSI, you can just drop it into these files and the zero config will, will take care of it for you. Uh, if you're not aware, with uh, PSADT, it's always been a feature. But um, if you don't define an application name. It assumes that you just want the toolkit to find that out for you. So by default, it's it's blank. And when it encounters that, it thinks, okay, I'm going to go and inspect the contents of the files folder. If there's an MSI in there, I'm going to analyze that and get the, the pull out the name and the version and everything. And it will now do extend that to the WIM format. So if it finds that, it will automatically mount it, search a new folder for the MSI. So we can just run that. We should see a pop-up. It's pulled out the details of the package. And because I haven't actually customized this deployment in any way, I've got a, a desktop shortcut here. And there's, there's literally no configuration to it. There's no updates being disabled or anything like that. But we do have a slightly newer version of WinSCP that has been configured. Um, so this one set up to close the application if it's in use. And after it does the installation, it sets a bunch of registry keys for each user on the system. So let's test that out. We'll get the application running. Let's find our updated WinSCP. And this is the updated close applications or defer dialog. So it will list all the processes it's found that you've defined that you want it to close. And you get the option to defer for a later time or close apps and install, which will just close them automatically. Dan, I just wanted to chime in there um, mm -hmm. before he's on GitHub. Awesome. I'm going to remove the apps as well, clean up as I go along. I'm going to be demoing this in a few different ways. Okay, so um, let's look at some of the compatibility stuff. So um, we've generated ourselves a nice clean 
v3 template earlier and i have over here a old v3 um, deploy application ps1 script so i can just generate this backwards compatible uh, version i shouldn't be in there so i need to go into my files folder let's copy Let's just copy over the files, support piles, and the PS1. They're the important bits. Just put those straight over here. And just to peek inside this folder quickly. So App Deploy Toolkit main under this folder used to contain pretty much the entire toolkit, all of the functions. And now it contains a bunch of wrappers. So I'll just pick one at random. So this is the old function name. And underneath it has some code to change some of the input slightly. And then it runs new command. And it just goes through this whole script where there's just a wrapper for every function for backwards compatibility. So I can now run this and install. Yeah, we have an issue. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. I'll work out what's going on there. I'm not sure if it's because I've got a slightly older version of the module. So some other things that we can do. A couple of new features, which I don't think we actually touched upon. So let's install an application from an executable. It's the old one. Get I mean, the, the couple of issues that we've come across, we know about like one or two of them already. There is, uh, we're probably going to have a, a point release uh, within the next few days. Uh, but, you know, there's, it's everything is very, very usable right now. There's uh, a couple of just fringe scenarios, uh, but everything's looking pretty simple. So the previous commands remove MSI applications. It was, Pretty apparent from the name it could only deal with uninstalling msi applications now we can remove any type of application so so remove adt oh no it's uninstall sorry uninstall adt application we give it the name vlc now i'll just run this uh, without any further information you can see what is going to happen it's not going to be ideal it's going to just find this uninstall string and just run it as is with no silent switch, which is obviously a problem. But if you research in advance, you know what this switch is going to be. In this case, it's a capital S. It will just work. Is it gone? I think it has. It's just my start menu hasn't updated. <laughs> it has gone. Other things are get ADT user profiles. Has a new switch now uh, for load profile paths. This will inspect the registry for every user and get fill in these extra paths. Which is pretty handy for. Um, if you ever wanted to copy something to a user's desktop, now that we've got OneDrive, your desktop may or may not be underneath a OneDrive folder, depending if you've chosen to back up that folder. So be, being able to grab that for every user is a, a nice touch. And there is support for that in 
this function, copy ADT file to user profile. So let's just pick a random file. How about a setup for this? It's right there. Let's copy that. Now, how it would work in V3 is you then give it the path that you want to append to see user's username. But now we can actually give it, instead of or in addition to that, a, a base folder. And you can tap through these various folders. So say I want to give it to the desktop. And it's copied it to my desktop up here. And that'll do that for every user on the system. And that's all the working demos that I've got for you right now. The release is now live up on uh, GitHub if you guys want to go and download it. Um, it will be installable from, from the virtual gallery as well directly. Uh, you can just run install dash module a little bit later today. Uh, not right this second because we, we just hit a minor snag before we started this. Uh, but uh, we should have that up there in a couple of hours. Uh, I'll also send an uh, email afterwards if it's something that's after today where it's live, Dan. Um, we can feel we can email everyone when it's live and only. Yeah, for sure. Actually, it's um, just worth pointing out that the um, if you go to the uh, uh, PSAP Twenty Two Kit website, you'll see uh, where there's now a new V four section um, which uh, will have all the documentation. It's we're we're kind of building it out uh, bit by bit. There's still a bit of a couple of sections missing, but we're going to have them done over the next couple of days. Uh, but there's a ton of information up there already. As well as that, on the main page, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's an option to uh, sign up for our newsletter. Uh, so we'll be sending out some um, more details uh, as you know we come across, or as we release new versions and um, as there's new uh, extensions built out as well. So, uh, yeah, sign up there. Uh, to kind of show up a little bit what that is, uh, up top here on the website, we have version 4.0, 3.10. Uh, this newsletter is something that you can sign up as Dan, as Dan was mentioning. Uh, the docs and the features updated some of this as well, did we not? Docs, references. Yeah, so that's the V3 stuff. If you switch to V4, you'll see you've got all the new functions there. And more Docs details being added. Yep. Uh, now we would like to hand over to our friend Ed uh, from Master Packager. And they've been cooking up something uh, yeah. work with V4. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Patchwork PC and PSADT teams for having us in this webinar. My name is Edis Perkums, and I'm a co-founder of uh, Master Packager. I have been working as an application packager for the last 10 years, and I have delivered about 8,000 signed installation packages in this time. I would say about half of them have been using PSADT. So we really thought that uh, we should automate part of this stuff to make it easier for ourselves and others. So we decided to create an application called Master Wrapper. Uh, what is Master Wrapper? It is a part of Master Packager. Uh, and Master Packager is a set of tools uh, used for application by application packagers or IT pros who deal with application management. Uh, but today I will only focus on Master Wrapper. So the current version does not yet support uh, V4, the public one. So, but we will release V4 support soon. So keep in mind, I'm showing you a pre-release build today. And uh, so without further ado, uh, let's dive in to move this. Okay, so uh, when you open it up first, it will allow you to choose either to use the new V4 template or V3 template. So uh, in this case, we will select the new one V4. You will be greeted with the same old UI that you used for V3 if you have used Master Wrapper before. What this is, is basically a user interface that writes the code for you. So you don't need to know all the new functions of uh, V4. You don't need to know the new parameters, etc. You use the same UI that you're used to. So first of all, we're going to have the general information. Uh, as Mitch mentioned, uh, uh, the ADT session variables uh, will be defined here. You can uh, either edit them manually or you can load it from an installer, an exe. It will load the icon as well. So just drag and drop it and it will work. Uh, you can also change the default parameter values uh, from the script. It will also add a detection registry key automatically. You could choose, can choose it to change it to a script or 
just remove it if you don't want to do. You can also configure this in the settings if you don't want to add it by default. And as well, you can add some additional information like uh, notes. So if you had a hard time creating the package and you had to search for some guide how to create the package and you don't want uh, that knowledge lost, so you can save the link that you use to create the package uh, in the notes and the next uh, time your colleague is dealing with this package, he can open it up and he can see your notes. Uh, then when we move on to the main actions, uh, automatically when you load the installer, it will uh, add installation commands here as well. You can add more by clicking at the add installer or just dragging and dropping more installers. It will add the uninstall, the repair automatically and uh, you do not need to know all the new function names, parameters, etc. And as well, starting from the next release, we will be supporting IntelliSense uh, for community users as well. Now it's only for the license users. So uh, this is a VS Code based editor. You will see all the ADT functions here as well. And we move on to the pre-actions where you can add uh, the same stuff as uh, Dan showed, uh, progress bar, we can add a progress bar, we can add the welcome window. And here you have to define the processes, but if you are using MSIs, this will be done automatically. Uh, they will be read from the shortcut table and uh, you will not have to worry about them if you're using an MSI. And moving on, if we go to the post actions, we can add the restore prompt, for example, we can set the countdown, I can modify all of it. I will skip the upgrade section for today, but here you can see the full script editor, so you can uh, open it up and see everything that was changed. So we all added all the variables, we added the installation welcome, the progress, the installation, and the restart prompt. So everything is visible here. Uh, IntelliSense is supported, so all of this is working automatically. And you did not need to read any documentation at all. And the last thing we have is uh, the configuration, where you can set uh, all of the different config.psd1 uh, values. Also the new ones, as you can see, out of box experience, etc. So you don't have to read the config file and change it. You can just change it in this UI and uh, that will be it. So for example, we can easily change the icon and that's it. So let me quickly save this package to show you how it works. So it will ask you to open up the files folder so we can copy the installer to it. So I'll just copy it and let me run it as an admin. So uh, I saw now while well, it's uh, starting to run in uh, the chat before there was one message that said it's going to take time for us to relearn everything. If uh, you have been using Master Wrapper before, you ha don't have to relearn, re relearn every, anything. It will just work automatically the same way as it used to before. As you can see, uh, it uses the new icon and everything is working correctly. So what this will allow you to do, it will allow you to uh, create the packages faster, make less typos, uh, it will allow you to have a standardized workflow so you have uh, all the icon and uh, the notes, etc. in one place. So the icon that was added in the first uh, general page, it will be saved inside the support file. So if you need to add it to Intune or SCCM, so it's shown in company portal, you don't have to go to Google anymore and try to find the transparent nice icon, it will be taken from the installer. And uh, if you want to try it out for yourselves, you can go to our website, masterpackager.com. You can get uh, the free community version without any registration and use it for free. Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, as I mentioned for other people, <clears throat> Oh, sorry, Dan. I was just going to mention the, the link is in the resources tab at the bottom for Master Wrapper. Go ahead. Corey, I fixed something that was broken earlier. So I can. Are, you, are you requesting another pieces. demo? Is that what you're saying? I <laughs> am requesting another demo. That is what I am saying. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I say we go for it. All right. So this is the PS App Deploy Toolkit. Dot tools separate module. Um, I just got it to work by just putting both of the modules straight into this Windows PowerShell modules folder so that it could automatically load properly. So the tools module depend has a dependency on this, so it needs to locate it and be able to load it automatically. So the 
first of the two functions was test ADT compatibility. File path. So this is the deploy application script from an old v3 version of the VLC package. So if I just run it as it is, it outputs a bunch of stuff. This is the raw output from the PS script analyzer. So all the stuff that's useful is, is squished over to the right hand side. But we can format the output slightly differently. If we say table, it will just give us the important stuff into a table like this. So now we're spreading out more of the information across the screen, which makes it easier to read. And we can also pump it to a grid view. Then you can just keep this and refer to it if you want to go through and check out some of your script. So some of the details here, you can just see execute process is deprecated. Now you start ADT process instead. Path, the very the parameter is now file path. Parameters is now argument list. These parameters have changed that they more closely follow the start process, the native PowerShell command, rather than just using something that's different. If you're used to using start process, the PowerShell one, and then you get confused and it's easier that everything matches. And continue on error true is now error action silently continue. And this goes through. But if you don't want to go and fix all of those manually, what we can do is give it the entire folder with the other command, which is convert ADT deployment. And if you don't, you can give it a destination and everything, but if you don't, it will just use the same folder where it is right now and with an underscore converted at the end of it. Conversion successful and there is our converted package. So that has Let's go to VS Code. There is the converted script. Yeah. OK, so it's copied over the commands and remapped those. And it should have also done the variables at the top, but, but because of the uh, an issue that we were having earlier, it's it's the same bug, and I have had it, uh, I have had word that it's already been fixed and already committed, but um, it will update all of these variables as well, which will make the whole just script just work out of the box. And it was working early today. We stuck something in that broke it, and it's fixed already. But the uh, these two, the combination of these two tools is going to greatly help you. Make your migration over to v4 and thanks that's it from me um thank you everyone for attending um we're blown away with support um that we get of this um from the community every single day so uh thanks for coming yeah there was a huge turnout here uh so awesome thank you all we'll get to work on fixing the last minute bugs <laughs> that were uncovered and uh get the module there'll up be, there. a, there'll be an, a module <laughs> uploaded to the ps gallery very soon yeah keep an eye on social media Yes. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.